the coach. Um, coach, how would you describe your relationship with Jack? Oh, you know, I was very, uh, you know, anytime it, relationships take a while, you know. Uh, I believe that, you know, um, and, and trust is something that, you know, doesn't happen overnight. Uh, I think it's come through, you know, preparation and um, just, you know, obviously, you know, time. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. It's getting stronger every day. You know, I think I've got a great relationship with all the quarterbacks. And, um, you know, it's something I you know, take a great deal of pride in is, you know, making sure that uh, we're all on the same page and, you know, we just go out there and, I think, trust and, you know, believe in what I say and me believe in what he says, you know, it goes a long way in, you know, the way he's able to perform. And, um, and right now he's performing at an extremely high level. So. Great kid, you know. Uh, you hope your daughter marries a guy like him. Coach, uh, in practice, it just seems like Jack is really dialed in. Can you talk about that? Even at practice, he doesn't seem to be missing much with his passes if he's missing. Have you ever been involved with a quarterback that seems to be that dialed in? It's been a long time since I've been around one like him. He, he's, uh, he's, like I've, I've said before, he may be the – one of the smartest human beings I've ever been around, first of all, not just football. I mean, he's a you know, high GPA guy, wants to be a dentist. and um, So he, he studies all the time. I think that carries over. He's a guy that you really can tell him something one time, you know, and that that goes a long way. And, I mean, he's done it several times throughout the year. Made an adjustment at halftime the other night, drew it up on the board, goes out, executes it for a you know, big first down, you know, so. Like I said, he's, right now he's dialed in, and you know, he's got guys making plays around him. Offensive line doing a great job. Um, you know, so just really excited the way that he's playing. He's going to continue. Um, with that offensive staff that you got, how have y'all been able to work together this year? Uh, how much input are, are you really kind of taking into things? I mean, number one, got a great offensive staff. <clears throat> extremely, uh, extremely, you know, blessed to be around those guys. They're they're awesome. You know, everybody's got a role. You know, that's one thing I believe in um, giving each, you know, coach ownership and, you know, what's going on. So everybody's got a role. Everybody's got a piece that um, a part of the game plan. And, uh, you know, we sit down, we discuss it. Sometimes we, you know, do more. Uh, you know, one guy may have several ideas that, that carry over. And, you know, we do all those. One week it may be he's got seven. The next week he may not have any. But, uh, you know, I I strongly welcome ideas. I want them because I think that we have great, uh, you know, number one, great guys in the room with great ideas. Sometimes, you know, they come in with an idea and it turns into a better idea, you know, when we all discuss it. So, um, yeah, we got, a, like I said, I'm very, very fortunate to have a great staff around. Do you feel that you're in a, I don't, I guess the way to put it, a rhythm as a play caller right now that, I mean, are you feeling good about the calls you're making? Do you not have any? Trepidation, or are you just, you know, how do you feel at this point in the season? I, you know, I feel good. We, you know, we're still, still got too many negative plays, you know, right now for my liking. I, I don't like, you know, our goal is to have two or less a game. I mean, I don't know exactly. I think it was seven the other day. You know, if we just take those seven and those are three yard games or two yard games, you know, then you're, then you're ahead of the chains. I think the biggest thing right now is we got guys making plays. Throw a glance route the other day to Quez. It's completed about 12 yards, and he turns it into you know 50 or 60. You know, so um, that makes it easy for a play caller when those things happen. So um, you know, we're just we take one day at a time. It's a new week, and now we go out and try to figure out ways to uh, score some points this week. Uh, moving from Arkansas State here, what was kind of the, the biggest difference for you to come from here, uh, come from there to here in terms of responsibility? And then I know working with Blake Anderson as offensive guy, right. working with Blake Anderson. I think that, you know, number one, you know, you're worth, that's it really, is you're working with an offensive head coach and, and now with a defensive head coach, you know, with, uh, you know, more of a, you know, more of a role, really kind of overseeing everything on offense, you know. And, and, you know, Coach Hopps is one of the guys, smartest men I've ever been around in my entire life. I mean, tireless worker, he's incredible. He's been a defensive coach, but I think that's been what's so really enjoyable for me is, you know, on a week, 
weekly basis, we sit down for at least four hours a week. And, you know, he's able to break down the defense and, and put it in a different light. It's something I really enjoy. And, and, and not really just enjoy, but you see it from their side of the view of, you know, you know kind of how to attack things. And I think that's been really good for, uh, for me. Is, is uh, the Michaels versatility changed the way you guys are looking at running backs or recruiting running backs? Is versatility? Yes. That's it. Yeah. Michael has really, um, you could make a case for a lot of guys being an MVP for the offense up to this point, but he he's he's up there from the aspect of what he really just opens it up. He's allowed it to you know really open up. Yeah, he's got you know good numbers and things like that, but he's all it's also helped the other guys. Um, I think it's hard to double team guys. I think it's hard to cloud coverage with certain guys, and he's a big reason why because we can do so many different. You know, and also Kevin Perkins is a guy that's growing into, you know, being able to be more versatile as well. So, um, just really excited about him. You know, but uh, yeah, we're, we're we're already looking for the next Michael Harris. When did that? When did you go? Okay, let's kind of make that slide, move him over the running back, and give him that opportunity. All summer long, we we worked <clears throat> a package with him in the backfield. Okay. So we had a we had a plan for him to get a couple carries a game. Yeah. Uh, well, and then he got hurt, you know, in summer camp and didn't really go through any uh, camp. We get to the Mississippi State week. We felt like he could play a little bit. You know, he wasn't quite full speed. So we said, let's just put him in the backfield, give him a few carries, to see how it goes. Um, after seeing those six carries against Mississippi State, we decided that, you know, he could really add some explosion. Trevinsky Mosley going down is another yeah. reason, you know, that we said, let's just do it full time. And, Paid off for us. Is he called in full speed today? Who's that? The uh, Michael. The Michael. Yeah, he's full speed. <laughs> Fast speed. How, how cool was it to Ladner, the, the pass to Ladner, especially after he dropped the one over the middle to come right back to you? Yeah, it was good. You know, uh, Ray's a guy that uh, is getting better every day. Uh, his physicality is something that, um, you know, I think we needed as an offense. You know, I don't know. He didn't play much last year, so he's. Like I said, he's only a sophomore and he's getting better every day. Still continuing to work on his, uh, you know, the receiving part of his game. But he's a kid that plays full speed, as fast as you can play. Uh, you know, I think he's got a really bright future. Yeah, he did a little double clutch there. Right? Yeah, he did double clutch, but you know what? He, he reeled it in, and uh, just something we've been working on, and he's getting better. Uh, this Louisiana Tech team on defense, what have you noticed? I've noticed uh, multiple fronts. Multiple coverages, big and fast. Uh, I think they're big up front and they're fast on the back end. Uh, I think it'll be a good challenge for us. Anything else? Uh, just the we talked about how developing the game plan works, but as far as the, the chemistry and the flow that you've been able to develop in, in games, do you credit that to planning out that first? Do y'all plan out the first drive much, or how would you say that y'all are kind of? Uh, going about doing the uh, play calling. Going yeah, the yeah. we <clears throat> always plan out, uh, you know, the first seven to ten plays. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that's what we look for. Uh, you know, obviously our situation is third down. We know what we want to get to, when we want to get to it. Uh, you know, and, and you've got guys in the box that do a great job. Chris Buckner and Reed Springer have been unbelievable, along with Michael Gibbs. Um, you know, especially late in games, you know, with the lead getting us to some runs or some formations that um, that maybe we hadn't ran up until that point. The other night, you know, I credit Reed Stringer for, for getting us to, uh, you know, a certain formation when on, on our last touchdown drive. And uh, he got us to that formation and it opened up, you know, I think four runs, uh, maybe for about 50 total yards. So that was big. We were able to, you know, uh, close out the game right there. How about now? Anything else? Coach, thank you.